What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're talking about something that I think is a huge problem with RTX 3000 laptops and that is the confusion about whether or not XYZ laptop is Max-Q, whether it's an in-between Max-Q or Max-P or whether it's Max-P, Max-P of course standing for Max Performance. Now I believe this is a systemic problem that is stemming all the way from Nvidia through the brands, through the resellers, through the retailers and the end result is consumers end up confused and unsure of what they are buying. Now before we get started, I also wanna mention that I'm giving away an Asus ROG Strix G17 with a AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX and RTX 3070. That giveaway will happen on January 31st at 1 p.m. It'll be a live stream, that's where I'll select the winner and I should have a review of that laptop as well, which I think will be one of the most popular laptops of this year. If you don't wanna miss out on that giveaway, either mark your calendar or hit Hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I go live for that giveaway. Now RTX 3000 GPUs have a wide range of watts that you can push through them and get better and better performance. Of course the more electricity that's used to run the GPU the more heat that is created so you need better thermal cooling solutions such as a thicker chassis, more heat pipes, better fans, and therefore you're able to push higher and higher clock speeds and more performance, better frame rates in games, more rendering speed and productivity applications. It directly ties to the performance of the laptop. Now keep in mind, Max-P is not an official term by Nvidia. Now Jared over at Jared's Tech indicates that Max-P originated from ODM or original design manufacturers who designated certain laptops in their lineup as having a higher wattage or max potential or max performance. Now Nvidia has never made the Max-P moniker official that I am aware of or that I could find online. If I miss something, please let me know in the comments down below. Now for RTX 3080 laptops, you'd expect a 3080 Max-Q to have a watt range of 80 to 90 watts, maybe 100 watts if we're dynamically boosting it up. Now Max performance versions of the laptop are likely to see 130 watts in thinner laptops and we may even see as high as 200 watts of power throughput in the ultimate thick laptops later this year whenever they get announced. Now because RTX 3000 GPUs have not been officially released and we don't have access to true benchmark data for RTX 3000 GPUs, I went ahead and looked through my previous reviews to find an example of an RTX 2080 Max-Q versus an RTX 20 2080 Max P. An extreme example of this performance difference comes in the form of two reviews. One review on an Evoc P960 EN laptop with an RTX 2080 Max Q, and the other on an MSI GE75 Raider equipped with a higher power limit RTX 2080, and it got 10,138 in Time Spy graphics score versus the Evoc P960's 7476. Now that is a 35% increase in performance with the GE75 Raider. Now there's a synthetic test. So I went ahead and looked at some of the game benchmarks. The Witcher 3 got 82 FPS with the RTX 2080 Max-Q and got 119 FPS with the 2080 Max-P. And that is actually a larger gap than the synthetic test. That's a 45% increase in overall performance. Now in the CPU bound game PUBG, we had 110 FPS on both systems. Now keep in mind that these laptops are not the same size, but they had the same silicon. The main difference is that the GE75 Raider had higher power limits on the GPU, providing much better overall performance. Now keep in mind, I don't think that we're always gonna have this big of a difference in performance between Max-Q and Max-P. Oftentimes it'll be much less than 30%, maybe as little as five or 10% difference in performance. It largely depends on how big of a watt difference we're talking. Now the real problem arises when you actually take a look at the marketing materials of a lot of different companies from CES 2021. Many of these laptops are gonna be including Max-Q GPUs, and yet in the marketing material, they do not say Max-Q. They just list RTX 3060, 3070, or 3080 with no indication that it's a Max-Q. And when you check online retailers, oftentimes they're still not listed as Max-Q. They're just RTX 3060, RTX 3070, and the consumer doesn't know, is this a Max-Q or a Max-P GPU? And to complicate matters further, we have laptops from last year, like the GE66, that was equipped with a 2080 Super Max-Q, which I did a review of, 
And now that same laptop will come with a non max Q GPU. I don't know what the power limit is on it though. Is it 115? Is it 130? Is it 150? All of these will provide a slightly different level of performance in actual gameplay. And the thing is, a lot of consumers are willing to pay $300, $400 more for a GPU upgrade in the same chassis. And what they may not realize is that they're actually buying a Max Q GPU, which may underperform compared to another laptop that's designed around a Max P configuration that has a higher power limit. Now, not all of the companies have left this ambiguous. Typically speaking, whenever we're talking about a Max P GPU, companies will oftentimes disclose that it is a 130 watt GPU when it's at that cap. But when it's at 115 watts or 90 watts or 80 watts, I believe companies view it as advantageous to keep it ambiguous because they want customers to think it's a Max P GPU. And I think that is just dishonest, honestly. I really like these companies, but I have seen so much frustration on Reddit and in the comments threads on my videos of people who are just confused. If you don't know, I've been putting together a spreadsheet of all the available RTX 3000 laptops that you can buy right now. I have them sorted by price, and I've also tried to rate the GPU on a just a rough tiered scale. I've tried to identify every laptop on that list. Sometimes I have to dig very hard, well past basic marketing material and contact the manufacturers themselves and ask them, what is it? And for a lot of manufacturers, I don't have good direct contacts, so I can't even ask the question. And the simple fact is I shouldn't have to be digging for this. No consumer should be confused about this. Now, if you look at Asus's keynote for their 2021 CES presentation, you can see that with the Zephyrus Duo 15, they publicly say we have raised the power limit on the GPU up to 130 watts and up to 90 watts with the CPU. You. And this is the kind of marketing that we need for every laptop on every page, on every reseller, on every piece of marketing. Right after the GPU model is listed, we need to see 115 to 130 watts. You know, with Dynamic Boost 2.0, we might have wider ranges of where the GPU might boost between, depending on if the CPU needs to take some of that power. Now, a very similar problem occurs in laptops that have overclockable CPUs. You might be getting an i9 10980. HK, but if you get it in a three and a half pound chassis, you're probably not going to be able to overclock with it basically at all. But if you get the same processor in a thicker, better cooled laptop, you can expect dramatically higher sustainable clock speeds and better overall performance. In my opinion, it should be required by manufacturers to disclose the CPU and GPU power range limits. I think this is a crucial aspect of laptop performance that more consumers need to know about and understand. And I think manufacturers need to approach it from a perspective of consumers are smart enough to understand this. And if they can provide this information publicly, it'll allow consumers to make wiser choices about what laptops they want to buy and know what kind of performance they roughly can expect. As much as I like being a tech reviewer and unwrapping the mystery behind behind the performance of every laptop. Like that's honestly one of my favorite things about it. I don't think consumers should have to rely on a tech reviewer to find out what these power limits are on each laptop. People just need to be able to know with confidence what they're buying. That's it. Let's band together as consumers and ask these manufacturers to just disclose this information. If you found it helpful, hit that like button. I much appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out. Huzzah.